Hello everybody and welcome to Street Smart Investing. I'm your host Albert and today I'm here to talk about AstraZeneca versus Biogen. So I got AstraZeneca off of the custom portfolio and it looks like the top contender for competing against AstraZeneca, which is the top earner. So it's basically the person who earns the most, the company that earns the most, and that is Biogen. And they are both in the pharmaceutical companies. And I will show you the sector and I will show you the following information. <clears throat> so uh, first and foremost, today is Saturday, November 28th, 7, 10 a.m. Black Friday. Uh, one thing I wanna say is that I am not a licensed or registered financial advisor. So if you're gonna invest in the stock market, please consult a professional who is licensed and insured. Uh, again, these videos uh, are not recommendations, um, but you can add them to your watch list. So any gains or losses are solely your responsibility and your decision um, if you like the videos or you like the selections that i have made you're more than welcome to add them on a watch list but again that final decision is based on you so again uh i do like my picks personally but again um I'm not allowed to say that, you know, I want you to buy or I want you to sell. Um, a lot of people I know, I, and I've seen other videos, um, you know, that people do and they do that. So, I mean, um, their responsibility is their own decision. So, I mean, they're gonna do what they gotta do. But again, um, no recommendations from me, but again, you can always add that for your watch list and again uh, your final decision is based on you so that's all I wanted to say before I start the following video uh, but again I do like my selections that I have made and um, you know they they work out pretty well so AstraZeneca pharmaceutical company uh, they are let me see yeah, let's just go in order let's just go in order Let's just start with this page. So they are at $52.61 today. Uh, opening and close, you can see. Uh, the day's range, the volume, that is a lot of volume. You don't really see volume in the millions. So the, you're gonna get a lot of fluctuation in price action. You know, a lot of, a lot of moving up and down with price constantly. You know, and this is like, you know, off hours, you know, the market, you know, the market is closed today. So even with the high volume like that, that's still a lot of action. Um, when I say action, I mean, you know, price movement. So they're very, very uh, solid company, I would say. Uh, look at the market cap is at 138. Uh, yeah, 138 billion, 52 week range, $36 to 65, you can round that off to 65. PE ratio is pretty high at 55.33. Earnings per share and dividends. Uh, um, it looks like the dividends are higher than the earnings per share. But again, it all comes down to uh, how many shares they have as well. But again, just looking at this, um, they need to earn a little more just to cover that dividend. And um, let's see. You have the free float. See, this the, the reason these two numbers are a little tricky is because um, this is including uh, private investors and insiders and all that. And this one's like for the public. So even though those two numbers look alike, um, that's the difference between them. So 
um, solid company. Um, again, a dividend company. Um, and I, again, I added this to the custom portfolio. Let's move on to the one year. As you can see, they kind of went down. A lot of companies went down during the March uh, drop. And again, another roller coaster ride up. And then it went kind of flat. Then it went up, sort of flat. So as you can see, that for most of the year, that flat, um, or if you can, you know, it's almost in the same range. So again, um, that's the price that you want to look for between here and here, the average between those two. Again, I'm not allowed to make a number, but I'm allowed just to show you. So you're looking at between uh, $54 all the way to maybe let's see what does it give me so like around 54 to like 57 dollars um but again it's at 52 now so let me see something Who knows it might drop I mean you just don't know um, okay based on my numbers I'm gonna show you a quick reference on the way I do my charting so let me see something let me go to the three month no hold on oops 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 oops, oops. okay Looks like it's dropping again, and then, no. Okay. <clears throat> so basically the light blue, um, marine blue and dark blue, those are like my long-term averages and then um, exponential moving average. These are my short term moving averages. I look at the EMA first, then the MA for accuracy. Um, so let me see. It could go lower. So I mean, already on uh, November 2nd, already went to 5163 so that point there's about 50 bucks so 50 bucks wouldn't seem like a bad idea so uh, let me show you this I use a relative strength index this shows the overall buying and selling for this stock um, you have a low of 30 and a high of 70 so obviously that's that's buying and this is selling and when it's at 50 it's in the middle so there's like a break even there's there's like half and half there's half buying and half selling so it looks like there's a lit right here at this point uh, let me go to the See, and this is this is a funny thing. I, I've watched a lot of videos, and then um, some people actually, oh yeah, buy this stock, buy this, and and then you know they might give a price point. But the funny thing is, they never show you how they got their answer. That's like, that's like, um, I mean, I'm not hating. I'm just saying, like, um, if you're gonna provide information, um, at least provide more accurate information and more understandable information and and you know provide feedback to your uh audience because um i know people have questions but again um the more the more info that you provide on a video the better because you don't have to answer all the questions you're already answering them in your videos so basically um when i use the rsi relative strength index um let me see so that is on the 50 see how that's sloping down since um okay let's start with uh november 2nd real quick so it, it went up obviously so i don't like that 
Um, I'll just explain these two. This might be too confusing, so I'll leave that out. Um, but again, so there was buying above the 50 line. It's buying, 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 buying. So around here, there was selling. It, it almost hit the 50, then it went above the 50. Now it's going right below the 50. So it looks like there's some selling. I will wait a little bit longer till it goes to $50. It looks like there's a little bit of selling in the upcoming week. So I'm gonna go week by week. I don't really go day by day because day by day it's kind of hard. And as you can see, um, let me just do a five day real quick. As you can see, look at that drop when, when you keep narrowing down the days. And um, yeah. It just it's hard like that so i like to do the one month i don't like looking at all too many um so yeah um let me look at the three month again um i just like to make things easy you know make life easy you know i just don't like looking at the up and down up and down up and down because you know the, those are kind of harder one day five day you know it's like for day trading and stuff and i don't really day trade um i do like short term like you know a few months or whatever so um it's going below the 50. um it looks like there's going to be some selling even from here to there there was some selling yeah and then it went up then it'll go down again then on um, the macd you have um that's the trend um so there was selling 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 then there was buying and the dark blue line went over the light blue so there's definitely some selling it's definitely gonna definitely gonna be some selling next week that's what I'm that's what I gathered for my information um, but again I could be wrong but um my prediction is that um there's gonna be some selling next week some slow selling so, uh, moving on, that I just show you that real quick. Moving on real quick. Um, yeah, I don't even need, need to look at this because I already have my indicators. Everybody looks at this, you know, oh yeah, the volume and blah, time and sales, and yeah, it's good to see the orders and stuff, but um, you don't need to, um, go insane and be a mad scientist and break your, your, your brain cells and chart everything down when you can just um gather everything overall which is that and you can just decide this is just way too much um nonsense i don't, I, don't I used to look at it but every once in a while it's good to check maybe every hour or so day trading but like every minute it's, it's insane um as you can see um another overall result of the order flow so you have an inflow um see and that's the thing i don't know if this is for the day or for the week or for the month so i'm just gonna take it as it is and i'm not even sure a lot of people just take pictures and post it but they don't even know what they're talking about sometimes some people not all um just saying even when i click on the info button yeah, that's for, yeah, small, big, I got that, small. See, it doesn't consist, constitute any investment advice. Yeah, but um, how long is this good for? That's my question. So anyways, order scale for the last five days. This is a little more accurate. So this is large orders in the last five days. So it looks like it's been going down. Um, so yeah, I guess you will have to pay attention to this daily because that's the only way. Um, so yeah, like I said, um, selling. So then, um, yeah, you have our earnings of 0.95 and then a dividend of 1.4. The PE is pretty high, That that's what I look at. Um, so yeah, let's look at the um, let me look at the news because I know some people like news. Um, more data needed on AstraZeneca's COVID. 
and this is the interesting part um again um my custom portfolio was made a few weeks ago and then all of a sudden astrazeneca says that they have an effective um vaccine or something like that but it failed um it failed to meet guidelines or something like that yeah it, it's safety or something like that so um So yeah, the vaccine, they're working on a vaccine. It wasn't 100% effective. I think it was 90% or something like that. And there was just some commotion about that. And um, yeah, some, the FDA or some kind of um, organization that inspects that um, wasn't too happy about it. So um, yeah, they just, See, there's always a problem with not seeing scientific results by press release. That's why you don't have all the data. People are able to look and really think about data properly. So I was wrong, actually. I said 90, so it was actually 70% effective after it combined results from two different dosing re regimes. So yeah, it's not fully effective. And um, it just needs higher accuracy. So um, I'm above my 15 minute mark. This I do not use because sometimes that can be trusted. Sometimes that cannot. And again, it's based on the overall market. Again, starting in March, everything's been going up. Um, and I was saying the last three months, everything's been flat. Um, not all stocks have been flat. Everything's just kind of random right now. Um, this year has been kind of crazy for stocks and next year I'm expecting that as well. Um, again, position cost distribution. You can see from the last time the market was open, uh, you saw the ranges. So basically from high of 57, low of like 52, 60 cents. So there was a lot of selling there. That tells me that um, there might be continued settling. So for the most part, that was some selling between uh, that day. Um, so yeah, average cost was 56, plus of $57. So um, what I gathered um, what I gathered for me right now, um, if I were to invest in this, I would say $50 right there. It's a decent price. As you can see, it went to the low of 50. I know if you might've missed that, like me, that surge at the bottom in March, um, you can still come in at a good price. Um, again, that mark right there, it's about $50. I just showed you. Um, that's a decent price for the year. Um, and again, once it goes above 50, even if it hits 52 or 53 again, you know, if you want to do short term, get in and get out, collect your two bucks, um, or at least collect the dividend. At least stay long enough to collect the dividend. Everything else I don't look at. Um, so this is what I wanna show you. The dividends, this is why I chose um, AstraZeneca. Um, their dividends don't increase every year, but what I like about them is that they're consistent. Um, just by looking at their information, I think that's why I chose them. Um, at a cheap price and they're very good at uh, paying consistently. Um, I apologize that the company is only paying twice a year, but again, um, for the price, it's not too bad. They pay, see, 93 cents and 44 cents. So um, 
the first six months, you know, in, in February, they pay pretty accurate in February of close to a dollar. And then um, later on in the year, so June, July, August, in August, they pay 44 cents. You can see 93.44, 93.44, 93.44, 93.44. And they paid out this year 93 and 44 so that's pretty good um, they only have one split um, that's not too bad in 2015 two for one one split I can handle but if it's more than one you're just kind of pushing it insiders so this is what I'm showing you guys this is how I analyze and look at everything No, I did that already. So let's look at financials. This is the info that you want. So they missed, they hit, hit, hit. Well, when I say hit, they beat earnings. Um, this is too much info. That's a lot to go over, so I'll skip that. Um, earnings forecast. That's the predicted earnings for the end of the year, and I don't have nothing for 2020. Um, the net income is going down. The revenue is pretty flat and slightly going up. It went down here and then it kind of curved up. So like that. So operating kind of went down. That's not good. I like to see it flat or moving up. The balance sheet, this is very, very important. So you have the earnings income and balance sheet that's what you want to look at and their cash flow um let's see their debt is about uh 50 percent no like 47 percent that's not too bad it could do better cash flow for 2020 i don't know so i use the 2019 uh, estimates for their cash flow. So as you can see there, those are their rankings out of 253 companies. Um, the, the, see, the point of this company too, um, aside from them being cheap, is their dividend. The debt is pretty high but you still get a good return 20% and they fall high in the return on equity so you know return on your money as well aside from the dividend um, so here we go this is the info that you've been waiting for so we have AstraZeneca against Biogen you can see that um, those numbers are insane they they they're earning 30 times more. So for every dollar that they make, Biogen's making $30. Um, insane amount. Um, Biogen ranks here. So you have um, book value per share at 69. AstraZeneca is only four. That's not too important. Dividends per share, where's Biogen? If it's here, it's not there, but I'll click on it later. Biogen is actually undervalued at eight. So AstraZeneca is at 56.82, so maybe 57, go on that off. I don't see Biogen here, but um, that's another metric to be used for um, pricing or to see if a company is overvalued fairly valued or undervalued um these are the metrics people use they use either that um that's for dividends and that's not i don't use that um i use pe every one every once in a blue i use price book um anything about three or less is fine return on equity i use that a lot um Biogen is at 41%. AstraZeneca is at 20%. So 
So we have a dividend yield. Um, that, that's that got to be wrong. 276% dividend. Um, whatever. Um, so anyways, AstraZeneca is at 2.59%. Uh, Biogen. Where's Biogen? Biogen doesn't even give a dividend, to be honest. And they're the top earner. So there you see. 78% and um, I will click on Biogen and that's it for um, AstraZeneca just one more thing for the profile see pharmaceutical company so they are an ADR American deposit um something I forgot so this is not an American company These are all the executives that work there. So let me go with um, Biogen. Let me see where it is. Biogen Financials. So real quick, Biogen is at 243. See, they don't even pay a dividend. They earn 30. Um, a lot of volume. One year. That's choppy. I mean, look at those chops, especially that one. Wow. Um, so yeah. Um, let's go to the analysis. Uh, just gonna skip because I wasted too much time. So yeah, they have that as a support and resistance. Um, they don't offer any dividends and that's about it so they beat 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 earnings and um, these are their numbers balance sheet so they rank as the highest earner they're at 57% Return on equity is 41%. PE is below 15, so that means they're undervalued. And as you can see, they keep going down ever since July. They'll flat, then they went down. So that is pretty much it. Biogen is at 243 and AstraZeneca is at 52 so you're looking at about uh, five shares to one so with one share of Biogen almost you can get like five shares of AstraZeneca and with no dividends so um, strong company but too expensive that's all I gotta say